This is Photo Walkthrough episode 138, tutorial 21, chapter 1, for Friday the 14th of January 2011. Hello and welcome back to Photo Walkthrough. It's 2011, the start of a brand new year and the start of a brand new tutorial, tutorial 21. Today we're going to be taking a look at an image that I shot in northwest Wales with some very dodgy light. There was a very high dynamic range, it was extremely hard to capture, and yet the camera really bailed me out. It caught a lot more information in the raw file than I expected it would, uh, which has turned into rather a nice image. I hope you'll agree. So let's jump in straight away and see the start of tutorial 21. That's Chapter 1. Hello and welcome back to Photo Walkthrough. Today we're going to be taking a look at a picture that I took uh, when I was on holiday in Port Merion last year. This is just along the coast from Port Merion and uh, so it's the northwest Wales coast and as you can see uh, the exposure really here is not what I would have liked. Uh, the dynamic range, i.e. the difference between the very brightest parts and the darkest parts, was just too wide for the camera and as, and as a result we've got uh, almost a silhouette here along the horizon line. This is uh, too, too, the darks are too dark, the lights are too light. But cameras capture quite a lot more information than you might think as long as you're shooting in RAW. So if you'd like to follow along with today's tutorial you can download this RAW file um, from the photowalkthrough.com website. If you go to photo, photowalkthrough.com and click on the tutorial source files button in the right hand menu bar uh, you'll find the link there for, the, uh, uh, for this tutorial and you can download this RAW file and follow along. Now I'm going to be working in Lightroom for the first part of this and I'm going to jump over into Photoshop for the final step of this but the version that comes out of Lightroom even before we do the Photoshop bits uh, is still very pleasing and well worth your time if you want to follow along. So let's start off just by taking a look at this image and see if we can just bring back some of the sky detail and some of the, uh, I say ground, this is obviously the sea so this is water detail here, it's a, a seascape. Um, and we're going to just do that by using the recovery and fill light sliders. So I'm just going to drag the recovery slider up a bit and see I mean, we can see what this is doing with our histogram up here. It's taking the top portion of the histogram and pulling it in into the uh, into the visible portion of the histogram. Um, so we don't actually need to do a lot for that to all come inside the histogram and therefore inside our visible range. There's nothing overexposed in this image now because there's no um, histogram hitting the right hand end of the, of the uh, no data hitting the right hand end of the histogram. So let's take a look at this left hand end where we've definitely got underexposure and use the fill light slider just to drag that in and we can see immediately on screen what's happening with that and I'm actually going to just drag that up to um, around about I'm just trying to get visible detail at the bottom here without it really wrecking the rest of the picture too much. Uh, we've got sort of a, a bit of motion there because this was a long exposure. There was just a little bit of movement in the uh, in the wee seaweed down here. Um, so I'm looking in that sort of range just to bring back that detail at the bottom. Um, and I'm just going to tweak my recovery a little bit more now that I've brightened the whole image by by pushing that fill light up, I'm going to just push the fill, the recovery up a little bit more to try and bring back these little specks of clouds at the top here that I think are going to make a, an interesting sort of uh, edge uh, framing element at the top there. So just already starting to think about what parts of this picture I want in and what parts I don't. And uh, I think the obvious next step now that we can see that there is usable data in this image and we really are going to be able to to make something of it is to just start thinking about that early crop so I'm going to hit the crop tool here and I'm going to work with my usual crop ratio which is 3 by 2 um, I like to stick to the standard crop ratios because it does make them so much easier to frame and if you're sending these off to printers they will quite often have standard image sizes that they expect you to work with so buying frames is easier, getting stuff printed is easier especially if you're going to print them in some unusual way and I actually have the image that this is going to turn into, turn into framed, uh, well not framed, uh, printed on a slab of acrylic uh, mounted on my wall right here next to me. So um, it makes a, a rather nice, because it's so colourful, the final image, it makes a rather nice acrylic print this. So I'm just going to drag this corner, bottom right corner in and 
I'm going to sort of follow a standard rule here and put this one third line here on the horizon. You don't usually want your horizon halfway down a picture. It tends to make the picture very static and, and uh, uh, just sort of saps the interest out of the image. If you put the horizons at, uh, at a one third line, either a third of the way down or a third of the way up, that's usually a much more interesting composition. There's plenty of sky still in here, there's lots of ground, we've got this nice foreground detail, some interesting middle ground detail, and we're going to really bring out colours for throughout the rest of the image. So I'm going to just stop there, that's a pretty good place to to leave our crop. We're going to double click in the crop to accept that. And uh, so now we've got a good detail and we've got a nice crop. Um, I'm going to just work a little bit with the light here because it, it's not very easy to tell. Um, and perhaps I know this because I work with this image quite a bit early on. But if you look, it is actually a little brighter on the right than it is on the left. You can see it more down at the bottom here than you can at the top. Um, but even the sky is brighter on the right than it is on the left. So what I'm going to do is use the graduated filter tool here. And I'm going to do an exposure edit um, where I set the, uh, the exposure to be about half a stop down. Um, we can we can tweak this number afterwards. So let's start with minus one stop, and I'm going to just click on the right and drag to the left, and I'm going to hold down the shift key at the same time, which makes it stick to horizontals and verticals. So, dragging from right to left, I'm now darkening the right and leaving the left alone, and I can tweak this number now, tweak this slider up and down until I think the the balance looks about right and at the bottom it's probably about right there at the top it's probably about right there a bit more about there-ish I would say so I'm, I'm going to go with the top because I think that's going to be where uh, most of the bright colors and therefore um, the the graduation of color which is what i'm going for in the sky is going to look wrong if the light is not even um, because it's going to sort of slope left or right so what i want is a nice even light across the sky from left to right which will mean when i do the graduated color through it the uh, graduation goes sort of nicely vertical without it sort of sloping left or right too much so i'm going to leave that at about minus 0 0.6 and uh, that's looking like a nice left to right even uh, lightness. Um, it also has also darkened the whole image down so let's turn that uh, graduated filter off and I'm just going to push the exposure back up just a touch just to compensate for that darkening that we've done. It's it's somewhere in the 0.1 to 0 0.2 range. Just trying to keep nice uh, available detail throughout. It is in this case translating to a nicely central histogram which will probably increase the contrast of that slightly as we work but for the time being all of our deta detail is nicely within the visible range. Now the next thing we need to do with this image is work on the colours and uh, what we're trying to go for here is a very sort of blues and purples uh, cold but sort of almost electric blue style to it just something really funky and unusual um, and so what we're going to do is work with the color temperature first um, just to just to bring the blues in and I'm going to just drag that down to about there now I work quite a lot with this color and, I, and, and messing with it uh, any further down than this really started to, to, although it brought nice blues in, it made it very difficult to work with the colours afterwards and keep them looking anywhere near natural. So um, you can only use the temperature slider and the tint slider so much um, before it really starts to break the image and the, and the data falls apart. So I'm going to do not too much of that. Uh, I'm going to leave that at around about four and a half thousand. Um, so there is definitely a cold blue tint coming in and I am also going to work with the tint slider here and push that up and we can see that starting to introduce purples um, and again you don't want to push these too far because it really will push things off the end of the histogram and it will make it very hard to work with this color later on so any more color that I want to add than this um, I need to use the graduated filter and the adjustment, adjustment brush to put those colors in myself and I'm going to do that now I'm going to start off by uh, adding um, 
a graduated filter to really darken the top of that sky up and add a lot of purple into this image. So I'm going to, um, with the graduated filter selected, I'm going to choose a color style edit and I'm going to choose from here a purple which is going to be sort of that sort of purple and I'm just going to let it be fully saturated and I can back that off later if I decide that I would like to uh, to diminish the effect. Um, I'm also going to let this push the clarity up uh, by a lot um, and I may as well just let it push a little contrast too. This is this is because what I want to do is really make these clouds pop and bring that detail in those clouds out. So I'm going to just uh, click and drag on the image again, clicking from the top and dragging down uh, and again I'm going to hold down the shift key so that, that snaps it to the horizontal in this case and that's going to as we can see add a load of purple in it's also going to just drag the exposure down as well I'm going to go quite a lot down on there let's go down a, a whole stop and I think I need to also just drag this up a little bit more and make it even wider so what I've done is I've clicked on the dot to move the graduated filter up and now I'm going to click on the bottom line and hold down the option or alt key and that will drag both sides out. Let me show you what that does. So if I drag this down and hold down option or alt and click on one of the lines they both move together. So that's that's sort of widening the whole thing. So if I now drag that back up what I'm after is letting this sort of cross the horizon line quite a bit um, but uh, um, just widen the whole uh, um, widen the whole filter up. Okay so this is heading in a good direction my colors are starting to look the way I want I'm just gonna drag the brightness down just a shade as well there just to I'm trying to keep a nice graduation in that sky Okay, that's chapter one of tutorial 21 finished. Thank you very much for watching. But before we go, I would just like to tell you about our show sponsor, mosey.com. If you've got important data on your computer and as a photographer, I guarantee you have, you've got photographs that you absolutely don't want to lose, then you need off-site backup. Remember, your files don't exist unless they are in at least three different places. You want a copy on your hard disk, you want another copy somewhere off your main hard disk, and then you also want a copy somewhere out in the cloud somewhere on the internet and that's where Mosey comes in. They've got a fantastic piece of software that runs all the time on your computer looking for files that have changed and automatically uploading them to Mosey's online secure servers. And the great thing about that is if anything ever goes wrong or if you just want to get access to a file while you're away from home you can log onto the Mosey site and download those files anytime in the future. There are no storage limits, it's all automatic, it happens without you ever having to press any buttons and it's a great deal if you use the promo code from photo walkthrough promo code photo gets you a 15 percent discount on the standard mosey home package or if you're a pro user you can also get a 15 percent discount by using the promo code photo 15 mosey is a fantastic service and for anybody with important data that you don't want to lose i absolutely recommend that you take a look thank you mosey for supporting photo walkthrough Okay, that's us done for today. Um, if you come back next week, we will be here with Chapter 2 of Tutorial 21. I hope to see you then. Bye-bye. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Please help support the show by using our sponsor's promo codes or by passing the promo codes on to your friends. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com